a collective security alliance. You, as our country's chief ex architect of our foreign policy, are you going to make the Philippines as a member of the Quad? Why and why not? Professor Carlos's question will be addressed to Secretary Norberto Gonzalez first. Well, um, we will always be part of arrangements like that. And um, yes, it's important. Dapat lagi kasi may mga kasama tayo kung may mga hiharap tayo mga problema sa mundo. Kaya kailangan, kung may mga arrangements sa ganyan, dapat pinapasok natin. Secretary Gonzalez, uh, if you have nothing to add, the other candidates may react to his answer. I think uh, Secretary Ernie Abelia. Yes. Uh, the Philippines needs to remain and uh, needs to retain an independent foreign policy, and in which case it needs to be able to dance between the two great powers. As we we can maintain relationships with them, but not to join, however, because we need to be able to maintain that specific independent uh, independent stance. We can relate with either one, the other one, or but at the same time we need to retain our independence. And, uh, in, and, uh, and be able to sustain our own, uh, our own uh, sovereignty. Thank you. Yeah, but Mr. Abelia, remember, you're still linked to the United States of America because of the Mutual Defense Treaty. That's true. So the Quad is composed of, well, so-called democracies. And so are you more leaning towards uh, being part of the Quad or some other collective security arrangement? Uh, it's not a question of leading more, but the question of being able to maintain both while maintaining a balance. Yeah, I have a problem with the concept of independent because it's like you're sitting on the fence. Is that what you mean? No, I mean to say that we need to be able to make our own stance and be able to make our own decisions without undue influence from anybody. Mm, I don't know that being friends with everybody is uh, foreign policy. We're so not being thank friends you. with anybody. We can have trade with the greater power, which is our neighbor. On the other hand, we can maintain our uh, MDTs with uh, the people in Quad. Yeah, well, the reason why, and this is for all the candidates I ask this question, is that right now I'm sure uh, the big powers are trying to uh, carve their own spheres of influence. And because we've always been within the sphere of influence of the United States of America, the Quad is simply an extension of this uh, proposed collective security arrangement. On the other hand, they will not always, we can always be sure that they will always stand for us. Well, of course, nobody can answer that question, even Precisely. if we ask Biden today, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Marcos? Yes, I think uh, any of these agreements we should, of course, encourage, as long as it is very clear to us what is the advantage to the Philippines. Um, the, what the professor just mentioned was uh, she spoke about the uh, great powers trying to carve out spheres of influence. I reject that model that uh, I, I believe no longer, ex no longer applies in the geopolitics of the modern world, uh, the old Cold War thinking. Uh, we have to ply our own way. And so it really would depend on what is, 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 is inside, or what, the, what those agreements uh, say that uh, the Philippines what will be doing and what those other partners of ours will be doing for the Philippines. And once again, uh, because uh, we shouldn't think of, of the old Cold War system, we should always think in terms of the fine line that the Philippines has to tread in our all our foreign policy uh, policy decisions. But if uh, Mr. Marcos, if you reject the concept of spheres of, uh, of uh, influence, does that mean you are going to scuttle the mutual defense treaty no. when you become president of the <laughs> republic? By, by no means. 
referring to the no United means. States of America as a defense no, ally? No, no. By no means. The, the, the relationship with the United States, our special relationship with the United States is not something that we can treat, uh, uh, be, be, be cavalier about. It is a very important one. And it has stood us in good stead for over 100 years. And uh, that, I think, will never uh, disappear from the Philippine psyche, the idea and the memory of what the United States did for us and fought with us in the, in the last war. And so that is, that is a, a specific part of our uh, foreign policy. But then as we approach, we know that uh, we are a hot spot right now. The West Philippine Sea is a hot spot in geopolitics right now. And that is why uh, we still have to find our own line. Uh, in terms of uh, in terms of all of these uh, all of these arrangements, except the, the one simple principle is that we will not cede one square inch of the Philippines to any country. Um, Karen, do I have time for uh, one more follow up uh, with Mr. Marcos? Yes, Professor Carlos. Yeah. Okay. Um, if that is the stance that you have taken, Mr. Marcos. Um, Suppose you have a situation where China is trying to, you know, take us in, embrace us within its sphere of, of influence. How would you react as our chief uh, architect of our foreign policy? Once again, uh, we, in, in terms of specifically to China, um, the, uh, the correct approach still seems to be one of engagement. And uh, no matter what the superpowers are trying to do, we have to work in the interest of the Philippines. And we cannot allow ourselves to, um, uh, to, to uh, be part of the foreign policy of any other country. And we have to have our own foreign policy. So again, whatever the superpowers do, we as uh, a, a, a highly strategic uh, geographic, uh, are, are highly having a highly statistic geographical location in the world, uh, really have to f walk that very, very fine line between these great powers who, uh, I always say, these are great powers we are in between. If they sneeze at the same time, we disappear from the map. And that is something that we always have to keep in mind. Thank you. Cal Yodi, we'll hear from you. Uh, Sa, para sa akin talaga yung, ay maiwasan maiwasan yung lahat yung pakikipagkaisa dito sa mga malaking uh, bansa sa daigdig na ang relasyon ay gagawin tayong parang pawn lang sa mga kanilang mga labanan uh, ang aking naiisip talaga ay mag, maging unaligned ang ating bansa sa mga malaking kapitalistang bansa sa daigdig, uh, tapusin yung ating uh, military agreement sa US, yung, uh, yung, yung Mutual Defense Treaty, yung BFA, yung EDCA, at pati yung relasyon natin sa, um, sa China na dihadong dihado tayo. Makipagkasundo Bakip, lamang tayo doon sa mga bansa nagagalang sa ating mga karapatan, sa ating sereberenya, sa ating territorial integrity, sa ating mga panuntunan. Any follow-up questions, Professor Carlos? Yeah, uh, Mr. De Guzman, uh, kung gusto ninyong non-align po tayo, ay uh, saan po tayo tutukod? Alam niyo naman ng ating military yung pinakamahina sa buong ASEAN region. So, um, ito ba ay uh, aspiration mo lang bilang chief executive or um, is non-alignment, this is still something that will wash in international politics now? Nine-align tayo uh, doon sa mga bansa na magagamit lamang tayo sa kailang mga interes. Lalo na sa kasulukuyan ng sitwasyon ngayon na yung China halos ay, at Amerika ay may trade war at nagigirian sila, huwag na tayong makisangkot sa kailang digirian. Makipag-align tayo sa mga bansa na nagsusulong ng pagkakaisa, kapayapaan at economic ang mas focus ng pagkakaisa at pagtutulungan. At hindi yung papanig sa Amerika o sa China, lalo na sa usapin ng West Philippine Sea na siya ang pinaka-mainit uh, na usapin sa ngayon. Magag magagamit lamang tayong phone ng sino man sa kanila. Kaya dapat makipagkaisa tayo sa mga bansa dito sa Southeast Asian Sea, uh, Southeast Asia 
at tayo ay magtulungan para sa kauunlad ng mamayan. Iwasan natin ang gera. Is there any rebuttal from our candidates? I can see Professor Carlos wanted to be well, part of the debate. I'm Jim. sorry. I hope yes. I'm not dominating the questions, Carrie. No, you it's just okay. strike me down, um, you know, if I need to shut out. Yeah. Yes, we've budgeted the time. If there are no reactions from the candidates to each other's answers, we are allotting the additional time to follow yeah. up questions yeah. from uh, our can panelists. Can I just do one follow up with Mr. De Guzman? Of course. Okay, well, I'm interested in the concept of non alignment because, uh, you know, I don't know that. Uh, it's like once upon a time we talked about that. So, sino hong mga bansa kaya ang ating, uh, anong pangalan nire? Ang ating sasamahan. Dahil sinabi ninyo ay sasama tayo sa mga non-aligned uh, countries. Because most countries have cast their lots with other the United States of America, with Russia, or with PROC. So, saan tayo? Diyan lang ba tayo nakaupo sa bakod? Ang gusto natin ay in, isang independent, isang hindi, de hindi dependent, kundi isang independent foreign policy at uh, makikipagkasundo tayo. Hindi naman tayo magpuputol, kundi makikipagkasundo tayo sa mga bansa na re-respeto doon sa ating severenya at uh, territorial integrity. Mas ganon. At ang mas makaka makakakapit natin, uh, sa mga sa kasalukuyan, lalo na sa usapin ng West Philippine Sea, ay itong mga uh, Asian country. At yan ang ating mga makakakampi sa kasalukuyan. At hindi, uh, ayaw ko talaga na pumanig sino man sa, kanila, sa Russia, sa China, uh, na nagsusulong lang naman ng kanilang personal na interest at hindi sa interest ng kapayapaan at kaunlaran ng buong daigdig. Salamat po. Thank you, gentlemen. If there are no rebuttals for this issue, we can proceed with the next panelist's question. So, no more rebuttals? Okay. Our next question will be coming from Attorney Rolex Suplico. Attorney, your question, please. Madam, salamat, Karen. Mayong gabi sa tanan. Issue po ng kahit kaninong administrasyon, ang corruption na tinatansyang may epekto sa mahigit kumulang 20% ng budget ng pamalaan kada taon. Ngayon makakaroon ng bagong Pangulo, kailan muling iakyat sa talakayan ang pagnanais na matigil ang pangungurakot, sapagat ang isang malinis na gobyerno ay nagsisimula sa isang tapat at marangal na Pangulo. Kung kayo po ay magiging Pangulo, una, kusa mo bang ilalabas o hindi sa publiko ang iyong salen or statement of assets, liabilities and net worth, at pangalawa, kusa ka bang magsasagawa ng waiver sa mga provision ng RA 1405 na nagbabawal sa pagpaalam sa publiko ng laman ng inyong mga bank accounts? This question will be first answered by Senator Bongbong Marcos. Well, sa, sa issue ng pagbigay o ng salen, ay eh, ako, para sa akin, hindi problema yon. At uh, kaya, kaya, hindi lang ako naka, nagsusulat ng salad for the last six years. Pero kung ako uh, maging, uh, ma maging mapalad sa darating na, sa darating na halalan, ay eh, natural ay eh, kailangan gagawa ng salad at ito ibibigay eh, ko sa publiko paghihingin sa akin. Ngayon sa aking palagay, yan ang desisyon ko bilang isang individual. Sa aking palagay ay hindi na kailangan palitan ng batas at uh, nasa, sa, nasa sa bawat opisyal na yan kung sila ba ay handa na ilabas ang kanilang, uh, ang kanilang salen. At uh, siyempre dadagdag ko kung may kaso na may court order na sasabihin ilabas ang salen ay kailangan talagang ibigay. Pag na-mandate ng isang korte, eh, maliwanag na talagang, eh, talagang ibigay at eh, uh, ipalaman. Sa sarili ko lamang, eh, para, para maging maliwanag, kapag ako ay susulat muli ng salen, ito ay gagawin kong public information. Thank you, Senator Marcos. If there are no other reactions from any of the candidates to Senator Marcos's answer, uh, we will proceed with Secretary Ernie Abella same for question. the same question. Yeah, yes. There uh, no problem uh, We just, you know, I, I, I comply. There's no question about it. 
It's short and sweet, Natalie. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And I assume no reaction from the candidates. Okay, we'll have Kalyodi for the same question. Uh, dapat lang na ilabas, no? Dapat lang ilabas ato. No, no, wala problema sa akin na ilabas yung salen at igawin publiko. Great, another straight to the point answer. And of course, Secretary Norberto Gonzalez. Okay lang. Okay lang na ilabas yan. Pero, alam mo, uh, siguro may dagdagan pa natin ng konti. Kasi meron akong na, na, nalalaman na sa ibang bansa. Hindi lang sa end ng mga public officials ang ipinapubliko. Public na ipinapublish ang lahat ng income tax returns ng buong sambayanan. Maganda siguro ganoon para pantay. So Karen, follow-up question? Of course. Papayag ka bang i-require ang inyong immediate family, asawa at mga anak na ilabas na magperma ng waiver sa provisions ng RA 1405? Of course. Buong Pilipinas nga gusto kong gumawa niya. Eh. Dapat open tayo kung ano ang hinahawakan natin para na sa ganun walang duda at mas mabilis ang pagkolekta ng taxes. Natama. I think we have reactions from Secretary Marcos. Uh, sorry, Senator Marcos. Sa Secretary aking palagay, again. kung sino ang, uh, kung sino ang nasa, bat, na, nasa batas na sinasabing kailangan sumulat ng salin, ay eh, kung nasa sa kanya, kung sila ay maglalabas. Ngayon, ang pamilya ko naman ay siguro hindi dahil pamilya ko kailangan magsulat ng salin at kailangan ilabas. Kaya siguro yung aking sinasabi ay lahat na kung may pamilya man ako na nakaupo, na sumusulat ng salin, ay sa palagay ko handa rin sila na ilabas lahat yan. I also saw Secretary Abelia reacting earlier. Uh, Sir, yes. Uh, basically, kung ano, kung, kung sino yung kung kailangan, like, like everybody said, kung sino yung kailangan mag, ano, maglabas, eh, ilalabas, wala naman. Wala naman kagipitan doon. Thank you to our candidates. If there are no more reactions, are there any follow-up questions? Attorney Rolex? No more, Karen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much to UP Professor Carita Carlos and Attorney Rolex Suplico. And we've heard from our candidates, SMI Presidential Debate 2022 will be back. Bye. Para sa tamang pagpili ngayong eleksyon, hatid namin sa inyo itong mga leksyon. Sino ang dapat na magpatuloy sa pagbabagong nasimula? Sino ang dapat na mailukno sa kapangyarihan? Dapat may paninindigang ipagpatuloy ang laban kontra insurhensya at illegal na droga. Matapang, ngunit may puso, may malasakit, handang magpatawad. Tagapagtaguyod ng kapayapaan at pagkakaisa. Handang isakripiso ang meron siya, mapunan lang ang kakulangan ng iba. Ang pulso ng taong bayan, nasa sa kanya. Mautak, madeskarte at alam ang saklaw ng batas. May konkretong solusyon sa bawat problema, lalo na sa gitna ng krisis at pandemya. Kilalanin mo ang iyong iboboto. Aralin ang plataporma. Paano ito isa sa katuparan at patataganin? Suriin ang track record. Sawa na tayo sa puro forma at salita. Ang kailangan natin ang magpapatuloy sa pagbabagong natatamasa ng sambayan ng Pilipino. May malakas na paninindigan sa tama. Hindi magtataksil sa bayan at hindi tayo ipagpapalit sa kahit anuman. Matapat at hindi magnanakaw, hindi sarili, kundi ang interes ng bayan ang inuuna. May political will, totoo ang serbisyo at handang ibigay ang lahat. 
matugunan lamang ang mga isyu na kinakaharap at kakaharapin pa ng bansa. Bilang butante, nasa atin ang responsibilidad na ihalal ang nararapat. Isa itong disisyon para sa nakararami kung kaya't pag-isipang pabuti. Huwag magpadala sa kasikatan at sabi-sabi. Ikaw mismo ang kumilatis. Tandaan, nakasalalay sa desisyon mo ang magiging kinabukasan ng bansa. Kaya, maging matalino. Maliban sa totoo, dapat may karanasan at kapasidad na mamuno. Hindi ka mabibili, kaya huwag kang magpapagayat. Sigyang dangal ang iyong boto. Katawang nyo ang SMNI sa isang malinis at patas na eleksyon. Dahil dito, siguradong balitang totoo. Ibibigay namin sa inyo mga impormasyong tama. Tuloy ang pagbabago kahit sa pagbabalita. Sama-sama po tayo tungo sa bagong bansa. Piliin ang magpapatuloy sa mga programang nasimulan ng administrasyon. Ituloy. 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 Ituloy ang pagbabago. kaso ng COVID-19 sa Western Visayas. Maaaring mas bumaba pa sa dalawang libo ang bilang ng daily COVID-19 cases ng mga lugar na napasa sa ilalim sa granular lockdown sa Metro Manila. Ang katotohan ng hindi na nila nakitang tumataas ulit ang kaso, kasabay pa nito ang pagbaba palalo ng hospital utilization ng ito. Tila magandang balita na sana ang dala ng halos sunod-sunod na pagbaba ng kaso ng COVID-19 sa bansa. Ngunit nito lamang Disyembre nang makapasok ang Omicron variant sa Pilipinas ay muling nagsimulang lumobo ang bilang ng kaso ng COVID-19 sa bansa. Kung kaya't mapapansin bilang lang ang mga taong makikita sa mga establishmento, pasyalan at iba pang mga lugar bilang pag-iingat. At dahil nga sa sitwasyong ito, may posibilidad ring madamay ang mga kaganapan sa mundo ng politika, lalo na sa araw ng halalan kung saan ay hindi malayong may iwasan na magtipon-tipon ng mga tao upang bumoto. Kung patuloy na tataas ang kaso ng COVID-19, papayag ba kayong ipagpaliban muna ang eleksyon? Depende na po na sa gobyerno yan. <laughs> Nasa gobyerno na yan, wala na po sa amin yan. Pwede rin hindi muna, popospon muna natin ng ano para maiwasan yung pagdami ng hawahan. Kasi nga, di ba, pupunta doon sa ano, hindi mo maraming kung sino yung nandoon. Nagbabalik po ang SMNI Presidential Debate 2022. At sa ating pagpapatuloy, ang magtatanong naman po ngayon ay ang Chairman and CEO of the Manila Times, Mr. Dante Clink Ang II. Mr. Ang, go ahead. Magaling gabi po sa inyong lahat. Uh, Professor Carlos started us off with a foreign policy question and I'd like to ask something similar where it converges with gut issues. The public discourse on the West Philippine Sea often glosses over the interests of the smallest stakeholders. It was refreshing to hear several candidates for president mention the need to allow Filipinos to fish in the disputed areas, but we have not heard specifics. The concern for our fisher folk seems to be growing on a larger audience, particularly the young voters, as evidenced by the release just days ago of a music video featuring the rock band Sponge Cola and singer Kirill. If elected president, How will you look after the interests of small fishermen who are occasionally harassed by foreign vessels and often crowded out in the controversial area by fishing boats from countries with competing territorial claims like Vietnam, Taiwan, and of course, China? The first candidate to answer this question is Secretary Ernie Abella. Uh, all right. Uh, we, the, uh, the fisher folk would come under the agri-power house. And in the same way that we have promised that we seek to provide, you know, provide uh, as much support as we can, we'd also like to do the same thing for fisher folks. 
One of the things that has been proposed is that they be accompanied by our uh, for CGs, uh, white chips, uh, that sort of thing. But on the other hand, first and foremost, maybe we th what we'd like to do is uh, for, we're setting up, we're planning to set up an agriculture, uh, a board of agricultural investment who could, prob who could probably bridge a conversation with these competing, uh, competing uh, interests with Vietnam, let's say, or China, so that they could, we can come to some sort of an agreement, we can have a conversation and allow them to be able to fish peaceably. We'd like to begin first by by bridging those gaps between countries and not just allow it to uh, not just allow to tensions to fester on the sea on the waters uh, so to speak but so we'd like to be able to first reach out uh, economically uh, reach out uh, diplomatically and work out some sort of a system uh, some sort of a code of conduct to be able to handle that thank you thank you secretary abelia same question to calio di guzman uh, malaking problema talaga yung ginagawa ng China dito sa ating mga mangisda, no? Uh, at ang kailangan talaga natin ay pakikipag... Hindi naman natin kayang labanan, uh, girahin yung China dahil sa klase ng inabot ng ating uh, uh, ka uh, military capacity. Uh, uh, Tingin ko dapat gamitin natin yung panalo natin sa, sa International Tribunal at uh, kakampihin natin yung mga iba pang mga hinaharas ng China dito sa Southeast Asia uh, para itulak uh, yung, 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 intern, yung mga bansa na signatory dito sa uh, on-close na sawayin. Uh, pigilan itong China sa kanyang ginagawang pangaharas dito sa ating mga mangingisda na hindi pinapayagan. At uh, gamitin natin, siguro economic diplomacy gamitin natin para i-pressure yung China na uh, uh, ma ma mapayagan o makapagngisda yung ating mga mga ngisda dito sa West Philippines. Ito ay atin at uh, dapat ito ay inirerespeto ng China uh, bilang isang member din ng, o signatories ng ONCLOS uh, para nang sa ganun ay magkaroon tayo ng laya na makapangisda. At dagdagan natin ng... Uh, 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 Coast Guard of uh, Navy Jans para protektahan ng ating mga mangisda. Okay. Thank you, Cal Yodi. And the same question, Secretary Gonzalez. Uh, nakakalukot ka na maiipit ang ating mga maliliit na mangisda sa napakalaking issue. Uh, ating uh, hinaharap na sigalot sa China. Kaya, tingin ko, dahil malaking usapin yan para wag lang mapunta sa panganib ng ating mga maliliit na mga gisda na pupunta sa teritoryo in dispute today eh medyo tulungan na muna natin ng gobyerno para wag sila magutom in the meantime kailangan ay suriin natin mabuti ang uh, nangyayaring sigalot sa West Philippine Sea yan talaga ang ugat ng sorlerne ng maliliit na ating mga gisda Huwag nating ipatong sa balikat ng mga maliliit ang malaking problema na hinaharap ng bansa. Tutulungan natin sila economically. Ilalabas nila tayo, natin sila sa panganib. Pero haharapin natin ang China. Ang nakikita ko lang sa usapin na ito, para bang uh, nawala ng respeto ang bansa China sa atin. Kaya kung tayo kikilos, uunahin natin ang pagbibigay ng respeto sa ating bansa. Kung tayo makikipag-usap, dapat nire-respeto tayo. Kung wala yan, mahirap ang pag-usap. Kaya, ang unang aksyon, respeto para sa atin. May programa tayo para dyan. Thank you, Secretary Gonzalez. <laughs> Senator Marcos? Marami talaga tayong issue, uh, hindi lamang sa conflicting claims, uh, sa uh, gitna ng Pilipinas at saka China. Kaya ngayon lang ang nakita kong national election na naging issue ang West Philippine Sea or ang foreign policy. At uh, sa palagay ko, sa dami ng ating kailangan na ayusin sa ating, uh, sa ating uh, pagsasama, sa pagkaalyansa natin sa China, ay uh, unahin natin ito. Ito ang pinakauna na dapat natin simulaan na makabalik ang mga manging isda doon sa kanilang palaisdaan na matagal na ginanggamit na daan-daang taon na. 
Siguro naman, may papaliwanag natin sa China na ang mga bangka ay hindi naman military threat yan sa kanila. Bakit sila maglalagay ng warship doon? Ngunit, kailangan natin mag-responde. Mag Kung maulit yung nangyari noon, ay eh tayo magpadala naman tayo ng Navy o kahit na Coast Guard para merong military presence, meron tayong presence of the state na nandun, na nasa lugar na yun. Pangalawa, Puntahan natin ang ASEAN at magpatulong tayo sa ASEAN. Dahil ang ASEAN ay meron din binubuo na code of conduct para sa ASEAN at saka sa China at sana maipasa na yan. Punta pa rin, punta pati tayo sa UN at uh, magpatala tayo ng delegation sa Beijing para kausapin ang uh, Presidente Xi at sasabihin uh, paano ba natin ayusin ito at paano ba natin gagawin para hindi na maulit itong nangyari sa nakaraan. Thank you, Senator Marcos. Mr. Ang, any follow-up questions? Yes, the question is what specific policies you will you will you will uh, adopt. You know, and uh, Senator Marcos, you you mentioned in the interview you had with DZRH and the Manila Times earlier that you wanted to use diplomacy over military solutions. I mean, are you changing that policy now? No. And in that in that same interview, Caliodi was saying that. He wanted to make the West Philippine Sea a zone of peace. Mm. And now he's talking about possibly escalating the situation in that area. It's mm. undeniably that we have to deal with China. The question is, as president, how will you do it? No, the, the reason I spoke about the, uh, putting a military presence there is so that the government, the Republic of the Philippines, has a presence there uh, to show to China that we are defending uh, what we consider our territorial waters. And uh, that is not to, for them to go there to fire upon the Chinese vessels, but merely to make their presence felt so that the Chinese know we are aware of what they are doing, we do not agree with what they are doing, and we can carry on with our diplomatic uh, uh, back channel, side channel, whatever way we can do to fix the problem and make, a, make us have a system so that we no longer have this problem again. Kaliori, you want to... I, I mentioned that you mentioned you in that question. Uh, uh, tama, tama, tama ka. Uh, talagang ang aking, plat, ang aking programa talaga ay i-convert itong West Philippine Sea kasi malawak na usapin ito, uh, i-convert itong West Philippine Sea into ay economic zone at hindi war zone. Kaya dapat ito ay mag-coordinate yung lahat ng mga claimants na sa mga teritoryo dito sa, West, sa South China Sea o West Philippine Sea na magkasundo at uh, magsama-sama para hindi para makipaggera sa China kundi dapat ipakita sa China yung pagkakaisa ng mga bansang ito at tulad ng sinabi ko kanina dapat ay obligahin o kausapin yung lahat ng signatory doon sa on clause na may nag nagkasundo sa ganung patakaran na igalang irespeto ng China yung kanilang mga pinirmahan pa sa ganun ay huwag ay, tigilan niya yung kanyang pangharas o panglalamang dito sa mga bansa dito sa West sa West Philippines one follow-up question, Karen. Of course, Mr. Ang. Uh, this one's directed at first to Secretary Roberto Gonzalez, and I'd like you to wear your former hat as Defense uh, Secretary, sir. And uh, in a previous editorial we have written in the Manila Times, oh, I have written, we've quoted the uh, Philippine Council for Foreign Relations, specifically the Chairman Rafi Alunan, who said that in his observation, those who are crowded out from fishing in that area, these fishermen often turn to alternative means of livelihood, primarily piracy and who knows what, probably smuggling. Do you have similar observations and what policy prescriptions would you have to address that specific issue? I think we, first thing, we have to make clear to China that we cannot be pulled into an argument that is superficial to the real question in the area. They're trying to provide us with an emotional uh, event or activity that our small fisher folks are not able to face. Do you know what China is doing behind, our, behind this? They're actually selling this fish as what they call as sometime, some kind of a fish for nationalism. Sira sabi nila na itong mga isda na ito dapat binabayaran ng mas mahal kasi ito ay nahuhuli sa isang lugar na ipinagtatanggol natin. They are making this issue. They are using our fisher folks to uh, uh, 
make this issue as simplistic as a, an issue of peace and folks not being able to fish in their area that is theirs. If I will be given a time, I'll add a little more. Well, sabi niyo po, may programa kayo. Pwede po ba natin tumbukin in a few seconds? Ano po ba yung programa na yan? Alam mo na wala ng respeto ang ibang bansa sa atin. Akala nila nabibili tayo. Pwede tayong laro-laruin. Kailangan magpakita tayo ng counting. Uh, hindi para makipag-gera. I was advocating national mobilization. What does this mean? Our young people should be trained for whatever exigency. There are signs that uh, China might, might, might tempt us. Kasi alam natin ang China ayaw ng gera. Pero pagka territory ang question, nakikipag-gera sila. Tinatanggap natin, mahal ng China ang kanilang basak. Handa silang makipag-gera kung kinakailangan para sa teritoryo. Dapat nating ipakita bilang bansa na kaya nating gawin yan. Mahal natin ang ating bayan. Handa rin tayong tumindig. Mahina tayo, pero kailangan magsanay. Any reactions from our candidates? Secretary Ernie. Yes. Um, in this matter, I think we should continue to uh, ex uh, examine the COC uh, ASEAN plus one. Uh, the, the ASEAN plus one conversations with uh, China. And in order to be able to address these things uh, di diplomatically before we engage in uh, anything more drastic. Thank you. Yeah. Thank uh, you, Secretary Ernie. Sec Senator Marcos. Yes, and furthermore, I think, as I said, that this is, this is not uh, something that, uh, is, is, that we should consider as isolated from the general problem or the general discussions that we are having with the People's Republic. Um, it should be the first part, in my view, because what we are, as Filipinos, we are most concerned at this moment, the immediate concern, na makabalik ang mga mangingisda dun sa kanilang palisdan. Yun ang unahin natin. Ngayon, pag nakasim, naka, nakahanap tayo ng uh, kasunduan uh, sa Rep uh, People's Republic of China, ay eh siguro baka nasimula na natin ang pag-uusap tungkol sa West Philippine Sea. Dahil kung nasabi natin, amin yan, at tumanggap sila, eh umpisa na yan. Diyan tayo magsisimula at dahan-dahan din natin itong problema na meron tayo sa China. Thank you. More reaction from Caliodi. Uh, tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, malalim, malalim yung, pinag, uh, yung dahilan ng China, yung pagiging aggressive niya sa pagpunta dito sa West Philippine Sea, pagsakop sa ating mga teritoryo. Uh, hindi lang yan, dagdag na lang yung pangingis, usapin ng pangingisda eh. Ang totoong dahilan ay yung presence ng Amerika dito, yung mga aircraft carrier niya dito. At yun ang gusto niyang proteksyonan, yung kanyang sariling bansa. Kaya yun ang problem kapag ka tayo kumampi, either sa Amerika o sa China, ay may ayari tayo, may iipit tayo sa kita dahil ito'y banggaan lang dalawa. Thank you, Carl Yodi. Are there any further reactions from our candidates or rebuttals? Masasabi ko lang na huwag natin payagan. Ah, uh, yes, Secretary Gonzalez. Masasabi ko lang na huwag nating payagan na gamitin yung maliliit natin sa mga malalaking usapin. Hindi, hindi malaking gastos. At uh, masasabi ko, matutuwa ang ating mga maliliit ang mga isa na pumupunta doon kung bibigyan sila natin ng ibang opportunities economically. At pwedeng paliwanagan ng ating mga mga isda na ito usapin ng bayan natin. Kaya, Huwag muna kayong mga istadyan. Huwag kayong paggamit. Kasi ginagamit ang isyo nito para takpan ang tunay na malaking isyo sa West Philippine Sea. We have a follow-up question from Professor Clarita Carlos. Yes, um, there is no doubt that um, what is being fought over here is, uh, is fish, is da. No? And so uh, there is also no doubt that the food security of China cannot be at the expense of the food insecurity of the rest of us. Now, let's move away from the pseudo-militaristic uh, perspectives that some of you have uh, noted earlier. And how about thinking about a regional fishing agreement, which is along the lines that Mr. Abelia talked about uh, a while back. 
the reason why I talked about that is, well, there is a personal reason because I'm writing a book on regional fishing agreement. And since any one of you will become the president of the Republic of the Philippines, I was wondering if it is worth writing that book on a regional fishing agreement. Why not? <laughs> Who wants to take on that question uh, and if, statement if, if first? I may. Sec uh, Senator I, have, Marcos. I, I, I beg to differ that this is about fish. Um, it is not about fish, in my view. It is about territorial waters. Um, and that, uh, the, the, what the, what, uh, when, when we have these 200 Chinese boats coming and uh, blocking our fishermen, it is to assert their claim uh, that this is part of their territorial water. And that is why you cannot separate the problems that we are having with the fishermen from the larger a problem that we are having in our conflicting claims with China, and for that matter, for other countries in ASEAN. Uh, and that's why we have to look at it as maybe an opening. I always mention this, that we have to try every single way we can. And I remind everyone that China and the United States came together because of ping pong. And who would have thought that that's where it would start? Who knows where our coming together will start? But isn't that related, Mr. Marcus, to my earlier question about the Quad? You know, if you have a whole array of, uh, you know, militia there, uh, you know, um, wanting to take over the whole of the contested South China Sea, shouldn't you lean on the Quad as a collective security arrangement? No, because that is a military solution. And that, uh, that, it, that proposes a military solution. And I do not think we want a military solution because we simply do not want a war. I do not think China wants a war. I do not think the United States wants a war. The Philippines certainly does not want a war. Well, but Mr. Gonzalez just said that China only recognizes naked power. So what are we talking about? I don't think that that is the, that is the method for, for us to, uh, to, to come to a, an agreement to, uh, with the People's Republic of China. Uh, there, are, there are three ways to gain territory. One is an upon agreement with, uh, with arbitration by an international body, agreement of two, par two, two or more parties. Uh, number two is war. And number three is bilateral agreement. We're left only, I think, with bilateral agreement. And that's, where we should, that's what we should pursue. Thank you. Secretary Gonzalez wants to react. Uh, precisely what Dr. Carlos says, the presence of the superpowers in our region will actually prevent war. That is an opening for us to gain something that we have lost. And this is respect of other nations. You know, we may have very, uh, our army may be weak in terms of equipment, but our nation is rich in the hearts of young people who will, can show to the world that are willing to stand if challenged. I do not think there will be war. As Dr. Carr said, the superpowers are there. China will not dare challenge that. That's a beautiful, uh, situation in our area of the world today. Let's take advantage of this. Let us show that our young people can do something. Okay. Thank you, Secretary Gonzalez. Any reaction or rebuttal from our candidates? I would still go back to having a multilateral relationship regarding that matter. So I would always, I would still refer back to ASEAN plus China. ASEAN. It's a conversation that we need to settle. And uh, so, multi because, you know, as we all know, uh, our neighbor is sensitive to international opinion. Any reactions? Secretary Gonzalez again? I, I agree with ASEAN. ASEAN plus one, yeah. ASEAN plus one? Yeah. Uh, maybe if it's ASEAN plus one, we have to make it ASEAN one, two, three, four. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, we cannot just limit it to ASEAN plus one if we want a dialogue. It's that, Muna. Yeah. <laughs> so, ASEAN, yes. Because we belong to ASEAN. We need our neighbors in this business. But if we want to engage with other countries like China, 
then we have to, I think, to also talk to other big countries in the, in the area. But I would like to go back to my... Secretary, we're out of time for, for your reaction. Uh, yes. Senator Marcos, I yes, think please. you... Uh, I, uh, I, I cannot see, though, what in this formulation but how we are going to tell our fishermen, wag muna kayo mangisda dyan. Anong hanap buhay nila? Anong kakainin nila? Kailangan natin ayusin yung problema yan. And whatever way we can. Kaya kailangan isama natin, gawing bahagi ng malaking usapan sa China. Yung unahin na nga natin, yung, yung naging lagay ng ating mga mangingisda. Doon natin simulan. Hindi malay natin. Pag nasimulaan natin dyan, ay lalawak ang usapan natin at kaganda. Thank you. But um, wouldn't a legal framework called the Regional Fishing Agreement be a solution to that? Because right now what China is doing is unilaterally declaring a fishing holiday. You know, like, wow, bawal mangisda ngayon, ha? Sa susunod na nabuang ka mangisda, ha? So, you know, she's setting all the rules for this contested South China Sea. So, um, if you were um, the chief architect of our foreign policy, wouldn't you want a regional fishing agreement well, yes. where every country washed by the East China and the contested South China Sea are participants or members? And if I may add, and this is not to rain on the parade of Mr. Abella and Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, uh, absolutely. I don't think we should lean on ASEAN. You know, uh, the countries which are fed by the Mekong River, I'm sure they will cotton on to China because the Mekong is rises from China. Big mo sabihin, wala kang tubig sa agriculture mo sa iyong tao, and we're talking about Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Thailand, Myanmar. Diba? So, yeah, to repeat, I'm not training on your parade, but I doubt very much that we should lead on ASEAN. Well, I think that uh, if, uh, if a fishing agreement would be included in any code of conduct that we agree with China and the and ASEAN. Uh, that definitely should be part of it because it is not a problem that we that we are suffering by ourselves. Uh, other members of ASEAN have the same problem, and that is why it is it will be critical to have a a, a, a robust and effective uh, code of conduct between ASEAN and China must include the issue of fishing rights. Yes, that's my point. Pull the leg of China into a regional fishing agreement. Well, we are, yeah. we, they, have, they already have entered into an agreement, into a, into a code of conduct agreement years ago. Yeah, but they're doing, they're doing bilateral. <laughs> they, have, they, yeah. have, they, have, they are trying to do it bilaterally. And that's yeah. why it, I think it is more to our, uh, China prefers to handle these, uh, these issues bilaterally between their country and, and another country. But okay. I think that the multilateral approach is still going to be important. Uh, we will pursue every, every avenue that we can. And Secretary Gonzalez, I can see you raising your hand as well as Caliodi. In that order, sir. You were first, Secretary Gonzalez. Well, I, I agree with the regional fishing agreement. That's, that's very important. Uh, we can discuss that. But precisely, what the Chinese is trying to do with our small fisher folks is to actually move us away from the major issue that, is, that we are facing in the... In the West Philippine Sea. The West Philippine Sea is about territory and about forward defense. The Chinese have been planning to establish a forward defense facility in that part of the world happens to be Philippines. They say it's China. We say it's ours. They are establishing a forward defense strategy, and sometimes we want, well, I will not wonder why. Caliodi knows the answer. Speaking of Caliodi, Caliodi, you're next. Uh, tingin ko talagang posible at magkakasundo doon sa regional agreement para doon sa uh, karapatan ng bawat isa na mangisda. As long as hindi tayo manging question doon sa pangangamkam ng teritoryo ng China. Pero once na tinuloy-tuloy natin ang ating question sa pangangamkam ng teritoryo ng China dito sa West Philippine Sea, ma hindi sila napapayag. Dahil yun ang importante sa kanila. Ang importante sa kanila ay makapagtayo ng base militar dyan sa lugar na yan para i-counter ang move ng US, ng, ng, ng Australia, ng Japan na sinisirkel, pakaramdam ng China, sinisirkel siya. Kaya gumagawa siya ng paraan para 
ma, ma pigilan ang ang pag uh, pagkukordon ng China ng US at ng mga allied niya sa China. Pero kung kung pising lang, tingin ko aabot doon. Pero huwag kang makikilam doon sa kanyang ginagawa. Thank you, Kalyoni.